In this video today, we're diving into the core of CMake. You're not going to want to miss this. You just got to create a branch and get on with it. CMake sometimes has a bit of a bad reputation, but in the last several years, CMake 3 has brought the world of building C and C++ projects to a much more manageable place. At the core of CMake are targets. Now, targets encode physical things that get compiled as well as properties associated with them and the relationships between them. You probably already know that CMake has a lot of features, but targets are what CMake revolves around, and all of those features are about creating and defining targets and relating them together. In this video, we're going to look at the basics of targets with the goal that if you have a better understanding of CMake targets, you'll be better equipped to improve the CMake that you're currently working with or CMake that you find out in the wild. So with the intro behind us, let's dive in. So to get started with the conversation about targets, I have the documentation up because it's a great description of all of these different entities, what they are. And I think it's very helpful to have a visual association that if I just talk to it with code at first, we'll get to code here in a sec. There's really two types of targets you're ever going to encounter. That's executables and libraries. And so executables are pretty straightforward. When you run the add executable command, the target that comes out, which is the first name you pass, is some type of thing that is runnable on your machine. So when, you, when this thing gets compiled, it generates a, a runnable program. Um, there are some kind of advanced-ish options, but really it, it most of the time boils down to I'm going to make an executable named something and the C or C++ source necessary to, to make that executable. Pretty straightforward. There are others. Um, there's imported libraries and executables and aliases. I'll cover those over in libraries because it's far more common for uh, aliases and imported targets to, to be applied to libraries. Okay, so with that executable, you get yourself a, a runnable program. With libraries, it's slightly um, slightly more diverse because there's a lot more types of libraries, um, but it's, it's generally the same syntax. With the command add library uh, with a given name, you get a compiled library, and then, of course, you provide the source necessary to build that library, but that's most of the time what, what you'll encounter. Now there are others, you can take libraries and specify uh, more specifically the type of library, whether it's a static library, a shared library, or a module. A module is really a special variant of shared. If you omit this, you can actually have it be configurable at CMake time without you building that option yourself. It's, I believe, documented here. Uh, build shared libs, yeah. There's this CMake option that if you turn this on, if you, if you omit all of these things, you'll get static by default, unless build shared libs in your CMake cache is set to on, and then you get shared, which is pretty neat. But if you specify it, then it's always built as shared static or module. Module is mostly relevant for Windows, where you get the .libs and .dlls as separate files. The libs used, I think, to like get compile time information, and then the DLLs where the binary actually exists. That's all rolled into one on, on Unix platforms. Uh, so I don't use module very often. Module is basically, I only want the DLL, and because I'm going to make it some dynamically loadable thing at runtime, but 99.9% .9 of the time it's you know, you'll work with static or shared libraries. Okay, um, enough about those. I'm going to jump to alias libraries because this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, I want this name to be an alias to this target. It's almost like type def ish, except for it's a it's an instance of a target. Yeah, it's so you can use different names to refer to the same target. That's all. And that's true for libraries and executables. The other one uh, that you know, that's fairly common is imported libraries. And this is very specifically expressing that this target is not built as a part of this project. So there was CMake logic to go and find a library on the system or is pre-built somewhere before this CMake project is being run. Um, so the imported targets have all kinds of properties associated with them when you're building packages, you're installing stuff, but just at the end of the day, imported just means you have all kinds of targets, different subdirectories. Uh, all of that is still one overall CMake cache and CMake tree. And imported just says, hey, this wasn't a part of any of that. A really interesting one is interface libraries, and this will be this will make much more sense when we talk about target properties. But interface libraries, uh, they allow you to create a name to collect a bunch of properties, but there actually isn't like a .dll or a .so or .a. There, there's no library actually associated with it. So 
when we talk about properties, um, you can collect those into a target and then link the target. It's an interface library that brings all those in instead of doing that manually, though I'll show a demonstration of that as well. Object libraries are really interesting, but they're not very common. What it is is in, during the compilation process, you start with source files, they get compiled to object files, then those get linked together then to create your library or executable. Uh, an object library says uh, create a list of just the object files, but then don't link them. And then what you can do is take the list of object files uh, into another add library or add executable, and then they will be directly linked as a part of that downstream target uh, instead of being linked into a library immediately. I actually have run across this in the wild. Um, it's It can be helpful when you need it. Uh, it's not something to generally reach for right away. Uh, usually you're solving a specific like link order issue or something weird that you'd probably want to avoid to begin with, but when you do need object libraries, they do exist uh, and they behave mostly uh, like libraries with some exceptions. And when you want to read about those exceptions, read this documentation. Okay, now we're over at some real code to look at. Uh, can actually make this a little bit larger for you. Um, but uh, some real code is where we can see this stuff working in action. Uh, already see, we're, we're in this project, it's this little viewer I've been using to learn the Cycles renderer. A little personal project to, to as for education for myself, probably not gonna go anywhere, but uh, still like to use CMake to, to build all my projects. And it can help with wrangling some of these things with interface libraries, um, using little static libraries that then get linked into the executable. Uh, maybe I'll start with the executable. Uh, it's a it's an easier one to start. So I have up in the root CMake list, uh, I created a project. Um, and so this project is what I'm using because the, the executable is the only real artifact that comes out that I'm interested in, even though I have some intermediate static libraries I use to collect some code before handing it over to this executable. Just know that this is the one target that I used project name. I mean, I could write, you know, the same here, uh, what I call it, cycles viewer. It's the same thing. So at executable, we get a target name, um, which is in this this variable name, and then the source files associated with what's necessary to to build this this application. Great. Now there's there's things there's target properties that then are associated with with targets. We have includes, we have preprocessor definitions. We have linked libraries and we have um, compile options. Um, the most common ones being include directories, libraries, and then sometimes preprocessor definitions as well. So with, uh, with this executable, I have exactly one library that I'm linking. Now this library is actually an interface library. And uh, what's important here is that this is a target name. It's not just any library. Uh, interestingly, with target link libraries, uh, when we are taking a particular target and then linking it against some things, uh, this also works with like library files uh, and things that CMake, do, like if this was not a target, it would try to, like here on Linux, it would be like dash link. It would put that on the command line and then that would fail if that didn't exist. Uh, you'll see out in the wild with like old style CMake that people will like link libraries that are supposed to be on the system here like with the dash l command on the linker it ends up being really confusing then because you you have a link failure that cmake could have detected because it should have gone and looked for that library and found it and then put it explicitly on the link line but anyway just know that uh, we're, when we say link libraries think linking targets that are libraries first and almost all the time not let's go link files that are library .so's or something on your machine, uh, even though this technically works with that. Um, so this is a target. So this executable, it links against this target. There's, we'll talk about visibility here in a sec, but um, just know that we're gonna link against that library. So let's go find that library. That's here. Um, I have an adjacent directory that encapsulates all of my external projects. I have CMake, Grab, GLM, and MGUI. Those are two, this is a header only library. This is a little um, embeddable UI library that uh, is really awesome. That's external code. And this is like a little utility thing to deal with GLM. Um, I don't even know if there's anything in it still. Yeah, it's not doing a whole lot. 
But anyway, uh, what we're creating here uh, is an interface library. So note, it's the same ad library command. This is the target that got created, and it's an interface library. And uh, we talked about, I, I mentioned before, there's different properties like includes, preprocessor definitions, and libraries. Um, here, this interface library propagates the list of libraries to have here into this one interface. So this could be an arbitrarily long list of library targets that are linked when you link this target, but this is a good time to talk about visibility and properties and how they propagate. So uh, with those things include directories and libraries and preprocessor definitions, compile options, when you see target whatever, like target link libraries, target include directories, target compile definitions, those commands, what they do is they're adding properties according to a particular visibility or multiple visibilities, you can throw more than one uh, into one invocation of this command or any of the commands, but at, at the end of the day, there's three types of visibility that propagate this information. There's interface, there's private, and there's public. Now, the that order is very intentional because interface says any target that goes and links this target. Um, so for instance, here, because we have Cycles viewer linking this interface target. Target link libraries interface says anything listed under the interface section is going to be propagated to downstream targets who link this. So this says is as if um, Cycles viewer here is linking those two other libraries, MGUI GLFW and Cycles GLM. Private is the inverse of this. So interface says Here's what downstream linkers get, and in private says only, um, uh, that doesn't apply to interface targets, but like let's take this, this static library. If I were to say um, private, private says these libraries are only used and consumed when building this target itself. So then if someone downstream were to link this, these would not be propagated, but, public marries the two together. So public says both when you build this target and when consumers link uh, downstream this target, these properties should be included. So in this case, it's link libraries. Uh, we have, uh, if you link this, this little static library I wrote, I'm saying you also need to link GLFW, which came into scope up here. Uh, again, in another video, we'll talk about importing projects and importing targets this way. Um, but this target came into existence from finding it in the wild. Same thing with stuff that came in OpenGL. If I was a good citizen, I would say OpenGL. I believe that's what it is um, because CMake does define a target for OpenGL, so let's use it. Um, but anyway, uh, the, these targets um, need to be both used when compiling MGUI GLFW and anyone who links it. And then uh, same thing here with include directories. I've said, hey, when we're compiling this library, this, this static library, these paths need to be on the include, include line for when, uh, when compiling translation units in that target. And when you link this library, you still need to have these on your include path to use this. This is really powerful to keep under control your, your what properties are going to stay with a target when you compile it and which ones are required entities uh, downstream. Because what's, what's crazy here is all of this information, uh, like when this is linked here, both of these things, and they could be arbitrarily long, could be tons of includes at various places, tons of different targets that uh, are dependent to be able to use MGUI GLFW. When this target links it, and then ultimately the application links it through that interface, all of this information is encoded with that one link line. You'll find out in the wild there's people that do all kinds of stuff with like the, the directory, like just include directories that says, hey, any targets defined after this command are gonna need these includes. And it, you create this house of cards of needing to know in which subtrees you have the right includes and are they in the right order and all that stuff. Here, instead, we just say anyone who links this target is going to inherit all of my interface um, and public properties. So that's it, then you're done. So basically when, when engineering this, we get to decide what that is, which is super powerful. Uh, 
So great, we see a demonstration of creating a static library, we link it against some targets we found on the system, we establish its interface for linking this library. This, there's another one over here, which this is another interface library. Um, because it's header only, uh, interface is a great way to um, create a target that you can link for header only libraries. So this library is just one header file. So, um, and it brings along some imported targets. To use this header, you need to link against the Cycles Renderer and GLM, and all that gets taken care of. So anyway, that's that's the structure of this example. So we use this interface to wrap up all this external code, and then we're over here saying, hey, all those external dependencies, we wanna make sure the viewer gets linked against. I hope that the simplicity of defining targets and the properties associated with them motivates you to use them to keep your builds under control. Linking a library target and having all of its relevant properties come with it and you not having to worry about them is very powerful, and I hope that you could use it to your advantage. Later on, I hope to tackle topics like demystifying find package or how to create installable projects that are fit for packaging. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or thoughts. Until next time, happy coding everyone.